Hello and welcome to Community Chat. I am Minister Tanikia Polk, your host, and today we are talking about protecting our students from the effects of verbal bullying, what many children today are calling joning. Uh, we're going to talk about the effects of verbal bullying as well as offer a spiritual solution to help prevent some of its fatal consequences. Now, some more common names of verbal bullying or joning could include uh, put downs, teasing, or just plain bullying, and also uh, negative nicknames. But whatever you call it, verbal bullying or joning is murder with the mouth. It is bullying with our words. And the victims of this verbal abuse are increasingly ending in suicide. Whereas the New York Times reports that suicide is the second leading cause of death in young people ages 10 to 24. Second leading cause. Also, verbal bullying is believed to play a role in mass school shootings. Whereas Science Daily reports that more people have died or been injured from mass school shootings in the last 18 years than in the entire 20th century. So bullying, including verbal bullying, has proven to be a fatal problem. And so, which brings us to our show today, here to discuss verbal bullying or joning with me is Principal Perry, Principal Bernard Perry from Calvary Christian Academy. And also we have student, eighth grade student, rising to ninth grade, Jalen <laughs> Hall, also from Calvary Christian Academy. Welcome back, Principal Perry, and welcome Jalen. Thank, Thank you. you. Great, so again, so very happy and honored to have you two on the show. And uh, let's start with Jalen. Jalen, uh, tell us about your experience with verbal bullying. Well, um, I didn't like it. Uh, they would most likely talk about my weight and my appearance and it made me feel very less about myself. And yeah. Okay, wow, and so, are there any specific examples that you remember that you can share with us? Well, yeah, they would call me fat, um, talk about my parents, like, and then they would also call me things that's not um, holy, okay. or like Christian-like, and again, it didn't, I didn't like it, and it made me really sad, mm -hmm. and yeah. Wow, um, <clears throat> thank you for your courage in, in sharing with us today. Um, do you remember the first time you've experienced uh, verbal bullying? Uh, I would most likely say um, third grade, third grade. Third grade, that is very young, very, very young. Um, but it didn't start when kindergarten, when most people enter, most students enter school. So what was it, do you think, uh, about the third grade, your third grade class that was different or was there a change that you think um, initiated the verbal bullying? Um, I would probably say the people because um, I was new to the school when it um, started so I would probably say the people because again I was new so I guess they feel like they can pick with me because I'm mm -hmm. not going to say nothing because I'm new. Yeah so and you know it's so important um, to hear your story because um, at such a young age uh, you're the new kid on the block, and people see that, sometimes bullies see that as a, an easy target to try to, to test out. Wow. Uh, principal Perry, as a principal of Calvary Christian Academy, please um, share with us what you've observed concerning verbal bullying in your school. Well, it's, it's not a, um, a rampant thing, but it, it, it does exist. Uh, and one of the things that I've noticed about it that when that culture, when you allow that culture to, to permeate in your school, it, it's easy for kids to do. When you frown upon it and, and make that environment open for everyone to come to the administration, the teachers, whoever's on staff, to let them know that someone's bullying them, uh, I think that helps your environment, that helps lessen it when you give kids the freedom and even the bully knows that if he, if he or she is doing that, then they're going to be found out by the administration and the teachers. And so you just kind of open up that environment to help with that. It doesn't necessarily stop at 100%, but the kids know and they feel a lot better 
um, about their situations and the parents are aware of it as well. So you want to keep the environment so that kids are comfortable coming to teachers uh, and to administration. Uh, I have an open door policy to all my students so they know that they're able to come talk to me if they want to talk to me about anything. Okay, that's great. And so do you see there being a big difference between or, you know, is verbal bullying um, just as harmful as physical bullying? Yes, I think it leads to the physical. Okay. Uh, if, if just taking Jalen's uh, case that he stated, uh, even in third grade, um, you know, if he's constantly being bullied and no one sees it and no one's here, here at some point in time, he's going to feel that he has to do something to stop it. Mm -hmm. Whatever that something is, we don't know. And I think we see that in our society now uh, uh, with things going on with all the mass shootings and, and schools and the most recent one, I believe, was in a middle school. And so we have to look at that just like we look at students bringing weapons to school, just like we look at students fighting in school. We have to look at bullying under the same umbrella. We can't allow that to fester in our school. And so we have to make sure that we have our ears and our eyes open and allow kids, I still say, if you make them comfortable sharing that information with you, whether it's in private or whether they just feel like telling you in a form, and the same thing in their homes. The parents have to make sure that they have that same thing and you communicate uh, with the parents in the school and I think we can help it. Will we stop it? I'm not sure, but at least in your environment, you can help control it a lot better. Okay, I see. So Jalen, uh, as a teacher, I get a lot of students, uh, because I call students out when they, you know, when they're joning or um, teasing other students, and they'll just tell me, oh, you know, Ms. Polk, we're just playing. So Jalen, tell me, is there really a difference, or what's the difference between playing and verbal bu bullying? Well, um, it starts off as playing, and they would say, uh, make jokes, and but then that's when it turns serious, because then that's when they start to go into personal issues like your parents, your family members, like where you come from, and that's when people, that's the one that's getting jumped on, and it's getting very emotional, and then they would start to get sad, and then that's how it be turned into bullying. Mm. Yeah, I, I can understand. I remember when I was a kid, you know, it started out, like you said, it's fun. Uh, someone may say, oh, you know, look at your sneakers. You can laugh that off. Mm -hmm. And then you go back and forth until they find something that's really going to touch you in an emotional place. It's like, oh, but what about, you know, your sibling? What's wrong with them? You know, or something like that. And that's where it gets really personal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. This has been great conversation. Is there something about verbal bullying that you would like our, our um, viewers to know? Um, I would say never do it. Okay. Um, you sh should never want to be the person talking about it, and you should never want to be on the other end of it. So just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Right, I agree. Well, okay. scripture tells me, teaches me that power of life and death is in our mouth, and that's for a reason. And so we want to lift each other up. I teach my students at Calvary Christian Academy, if you don't have anything positive to say, you don't say anything. Mm -hmm. You just keep it moving. Uh, don't, don't, we, we speak encouragement to one another, but the negative aspects of things, no parent wants to hear that their child is a bully, but we do have students that are bullies. Mm -hmm. And so we have to address those things when they arise. Right. Well, thank you to again, wonderful information. So happy that you joined us on the show. Uh, we will be back. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. I am Minister Tanikia Polk, your host. And today we are talking about protecting our students from verbal bullying. And in order to protect our students from verbal bullying, we first have to know how and why it happens. And so joining me in this segment, I have two, stu three students from Calvary Christian Academy on the set um, to discuss why students tease one another. Uh, we have IFA, we have True, and we have Amon from Calvary Christian Academy. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so as I said, we're just going to jump right on in. Um, there are three evil spirits that bullies listen to, which causes them to uh, verbally bully someone else. Um, true. 
What's the first one? Fear. Fear. Tell me about fear. The spirit of fear tells us something bad is going to happen to us, and it causes us to worry. Wow, wow. So fear causes us to worry. And what do you have in your hand? I have a two-sided coin. The first side represents the bully. Fear is telling the bully that he should be stronger and feel better about himself than other people. So if he bullies the other person, he thinks he's stronger and better than the person for it. Other people won't bully him. Yeah, we discussed that. That's why uh, we have people who want to be macho, you know, uh, prove that they're strong because fear is telling them that they need to be strong in order to... To pr for protection because they're afraid of other people. And so what about the other side of the coin? The other side represents, like the other side tells the person that that something is good for them to do and peop other people are, are telling them that it's good and fear is telling them it's not good because they're too nervous. Okay, that's a good example. So for an example, um, sometimes when people have been verbally bullied, then they start listening to a spirit of fear that tells them to not do something that is good for them. So for an example, if, um, and this happens a lot in class, if a student is called on to recite a, an awesome poem that they, they made, they may be fearful to do that because like what you said, um, some of the, their classmates uh, may actually, they're afraid that their classmates may tease them. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. And so, IFA, what's another evil spirit that bullies listen to? Anger. Anger. Tell me about ungodly anger, IFA. We feel angry when I or something I really care about is treated badly. Anger is natural, but people handle it two different ways, the healthy way and the unhealthy way. Okay, so a healthy way and unhealthy way, you're absolutely right. Um, all anger isn't bad, is mm -hmm. what you just said, right? Okay, tell me, um, I know we discussed an example of a pot. Yes. How does that result, uh, relate to anger? So like in the pot, so the water represents your ability to think clearly and the fire represents your anger. So for example, if a student jumps on me on my sneakers and I get mad because this student jumps on me about uh, my clothes every day, stuff can escalate. It can escalate. Okay, so, and you have the pot, and you said the fire represents the anger, the water inside the pot, if you're boiling water, represents our ability to think clearly. Um, what would be the healthy way to get rid of the anger then? There are actually three. The first one is to separate. So like, if you know something's gonna, bad's gonna happen, you're gonna regret it, you should separate it if needed. The second one is to address the problem so you should tell an adult or a trusted person that, or your teacher that what's happening might go bad. And the third one is to forgive. Okay, and what does it mean to forgive? Forgiveness is not to be like a doormat and let people just walk all over you and, get, and continue to be bullied, but it's to like try to, like forgiveness is trying not to like harm the bully and like forgiveness helps you better than the bully because it makes you feel less bitter makes you feel less bitter. Wow, so actually those are three things that we need. We need to actually do all those three. The first one you mentioned, um, the separation, that may or may not, we, we may or may not have to do that. Um, but definitely the second two, like you said, uh, addressing the situation and uh, forgiving. And, and like you said, forgiving doesn't mean that we're going to just take being bullied, right? And not say anything, that's good. Okay, so we've discussed how to uh, turn our fires off, if you would, in, in a healthy way. What's the unhealthy? There are two pots that you showed us, right, yes. um, that's on the screen. So what's the unhealthy way that people sometimes deal with anger and specifically probably bullies, right? So the first one is like in the pot of the water or your ability to think clearly disappears and evaporates. The second one is Wait, that- Wait, why does the water? Uh, evaporate because that's when like your issues escalates and then it turns into fire mm -hmm. instead of just being calm and smooth and that's because they haven't turned the anger off the fire is still going so it evaporates the water or our ability to think right 
Okay, what was the number two? The second one is you burn the pot, which means like when you're angry, you can hurt your body. And the third one is if you stay angry, you can hurt and even kill other people. Right, right. So I think what you said is very important as far as if we keep the fire underneath the pot, um, we, we end up burning the pot. And in, your, in our example, it's the pot represents our body. So anger really hurts, uh, hurts the person who's angry, right? Um, so that's something uh, important to know. And then what's the last one you said? The last one was when you stay angry, you can actually hurt and even kill other people around you. Right, right. Uh, because in, in the pot, the fire uh, spreads, right, if we don't turn it off. So that's excellent. Thank you for sharing, IFA. Okay, and so the third evil spirit is insecurity. Amon, what is insecurity? Insecurity gives us that not too feel, good feeling about ourselves. And we, when we look in the mirror, insecurity tells us we are worthless and we do not have any value as other people. When, when bullies don't feel good about themselves, they, it makes it easier for them to point out a flaw in other people and, bec and because they feel critical and judgmental about themselves, they make other people the same way. Mm -hmm. And insecurity sounds like this. I'm no good, nobody loves me, my clothes and shoes are ugly, and okay. I'm ugly. All right, good, so we have a mirror here, and so we're talking about insecurity. And like you said, an insecure person looking in the mirror would say, what type of things, what would be going on in their mind? I'm no good, nobody loves me, my clothes and shoes are ugly, I am ugly. Okay, all right, so here we have, um, and you guys did an awesome job, we have three evil spirits that um, influence bullies to tease other students, right? We have, what do we have, IFA? Uh, bullies listen to anger. Bullies listen to anger? Bullies listen to fear. Okay. Bullies listen to insecurity. Okay, there you have it. Thanks again, guys, for being on the show, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. I am Minister Tanikia Polk, your host, back with another group of students. We have Caden, Prince, and Jalen joining us um, in our discussion on protecting and guarding our hearts from the effects of verbal bullying. And so these three students have joined me in the studio today to give some godly tips on how to guard our hearts in the event that we are teased. Um, first up, Caden, what's the first godly tip? The first tip is to receive God's protection. God promised us to never leave us nor forsake us. He loves me and my family and my friends. Okay, so that's good. So our number one tip, which is what Caden just mentioned, is just realizing that God is our protection, right? Um, and that protection comes from his love for us. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Caden? God loves me, my friends, and family. He watches over me. Okay, yeah, so even when, that's great, even when um, someone's teasing us, yeah, of course you're going to um, tell someone, but just remembering that God loves us, no matter what anybody else says about us, um, will help guard our hearts um, so that it won't hurt as much as if we didn't have, we didn't think we had God's love and protection. That's great. Thank you, Caden. Okay, uh, Jalen, what's another godly tip? Forgiveness. Okay, what's forgiveness? It is easier to forgive um, the bully um, when you realize that it is not the person who is teasing you. The bully is listening to an evil spirit who is telling the person to tease you. It is okay to feel angry as long as you quickly turn off the fire and separate yourself from the person that you are angry at. Or you can work it out with that person in a respectful manner. Okay, that's great. Um, so what you're referring to is the fire that IFA had mentioned 
um, in the last segment. So when it becomes, you're saying it becomes easier to forgive um, when we realize that it's not really the bully that's doing the, the teasing, but they're listening to evil spirits that are telling them to do the teasing. That's great. Um, and then our final godly tip, Prince, would you share what that is for us? Confidence. Okay, great. What is confidence? Confidence is when you're feeling good about yourself. You get confidence when you do the things you love. When you do the things you love, you get friends. God said his strength is perfect in weakness. Wow, yes, that's a good one, Prince. Um, God's strength is perfect in weakness. So what what exactly did that mean? Because we all have weaknesses, right? And sometimes our weakness causes us to feel insecure. But God is saying that his strength is perfect in our weakness. What does that mean to you, Prince? It means that if you're bad at something, God will help you feel better. Okay, he'll help you feel better even while you, you have that weakness, right? And then um, you mentioned doing something um, that's good will help you get confidence. Something that you're good at will help you gain confidence as well. Is that right? Okay, what are some things that you enjoy doing? Yes, you. <laughs> um, I like playing games and making people laugh. Okay, right. So that's another great way to get confidence is um, to continue working in and what you're good at, right? Okay, so that's great. All of these godly tips help protect us from being hurt by teasing. So let's just watch this video to see how listening to God's spirit of godly protection, forgiveness, and confidence can create a protective barrier which guards us against teasing. And after that video, we'll also end, when, end with an important message to bullies. Oh, you ain't got a problem with that? That's because you're just a little scaredy cat. Come on, baby. What, you're not gonna fight back? Because you're a punk. Yeah. You're scared. Yeah. When we know God's love is protecting us and we have forgiveness and confidence, joning can't hurt us. Your words cannot hurt me because I got God on my side and he loves me. God protects my heart and I may be a little different, but I'm still valid. One thing about myself is that I'm very unique. I know I forgive you, because I know it's not you trying to hurt me. It's the it's the devil's fear, insecurity, and anger inside of me. Welcome back. I am Minister Tanikia Polk, your host of Community Chat, and this is one of the most important parts of the show. If you've been listening to and agreeing with evil spirits of ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity caused by a bully in a school or at home or anywhere else, then God wants to free you from them so that you don't have to listen to them anymore and so that you can have a joyful life that Jesus died to give us. Now, if you are a bully or a victim of bullying and you want to be free from ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity, you can say this prayer I'm about to share or something similar. Now, when you say it, say it aloud so the evil spirits can hear you because they cannot read your mind. Okay, here we go. Father God, forgive me for listening to and obeying spirits of ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity. If my family members have obeyed evil spirits of ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity, they were wrong. God, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I cast ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity out of my heart and my life into the dry place in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, God, for delivering me from ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity. Now, if you said this prayer, at times you will still feel ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity 
trying to tell you what to do. Resist them. When you do, tell those spirits, and you can say it out loud, but you don't have to let everybody hear you say it, that they can no longer tell you what to do because Jesus died so that you can be forgiven and free from ungodly fear, anger, and insecurity. Then just continue to thank God for his love and protection, his forgiveness, and for his confidence. Again, that's his love and protection, his forgiveness, and his confidence. Okay? All right, well, our time is up for this show. My name is Minister Tanikia Polk, the host, and I thank you so much for watching Community Chat. I hope you are educated and inspired, and if you'd like to learn more about my teachings and books, please visit www.communityofthrivers.org. Thanks again for all of our special guests today, and thank you for watching. God bless. blessed here today and truly it's been a blessing for me to receive the so we replace accusation with goodness okay, listen, everything will be all right. but you got to give him